Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and today I'm going to show you how to make use of automation in Cubase. Automation is really useful for being able to take control of a number of features in Cubase or any other digital audio workstation, which will allow you to automate effects, volume changes, panning, and many other options in your audio workstation. It's real easy to make use of in Cubase, so let's jump right into it. Now I have here in Cubase some drums which I've imported into my session and I would like to start taking over the volume control of these drums. I'd like to make some changes which will happen over the timeline as the track plays back and I'd like these changes to happen automatically. So in order to take control of automation, first thing I need to do is right click on my track and select the option show automation. This will immediately show the automation lane and initially the first automation lane that I'm going to see is going to be the volume automation lane. I can click here on this small pull down box and you're going to notice that I'm going to have a number of other options which I can take control of uh, for automating here in Cubase such as panning, input gain, and various things like that. So that's the first way for me to take over automation in Cubase. The second way to show automation is to click on the project menu and select the option automation panel. This is going to open and show the automation panel and here I can select my global automation mode such as touch, auto latch, or crossover. I can make a number of other changes such as activating read for all tracks or write for all tracks. And here I can also suspend the reading and the writing for a number of different automation types. I can also choose to show my automation here so I can click on volume or I could click on panning and various other options in order to show those automation lanes so you'll notice now my volume automation lane is showing in my Cubase session. So once we have shown our automation lanes how do we start to make use of them? Well the first most important thing we have to do is enable the read option for our automation track. If we don't do that, then our automation will not be read by Cubase, so make sure you enable the little R and it's glowing green right here. Now, you're going to notice that I have this blue line moving across the center of my automation track, and this blue line currently is representative of the volume settings for my track. Now I can start to make changes to the automation in many different ways. The first is by simply clicking on this blue line, I can create new anchor points. I can click and drag on each of these anchor points and as I click and drag you'll notice that they will change. I can drag them up, drag them down and if I like, if I dislike any of my changes here I can simply click drag, select all of these anchor points, hit delete on my keyboard and delete them all. So this is one quick way to create new automation anchor points and changes in my session. Another way that I can create automation changes is by making use of the draw mode. Here I have the draw tool in the top of my Cubase window which I'm working in. I can click to select the draw tool and now in my automation lane I can simply click, drag, and draw a new automation change into my automation lane. Now you'll notice I'm going to create a lot of anchor points when I do this. So you'll want to be careful when you use the draw tool because it will create a large number of anchor points which can be hard to edit later on down the road. You can also make use of the line tool by simply clicking on the line tool and again drawing into your automation lane to create new automation changes. This is a great way to create quick and simple automation changes in your project and again if you don't like any of these you can simply go back to the arrow tool, select any of the automation that you've created and you can delete your automation. So that's how we can manually draw in automation. Now there's another way that we can add automation to our track that is by engaging the right mode for our automation lane. You're going to notice the W right here when I mouse over it. I'm going to notice that this is the right enable function. If I enable this, this means that any changes which I make to my mixer or other automatable functions while Cubase is playing back, I will, route, I will write new automation changes to the automation lane which I have engaged in Cubase. So I'll show you how this works. By making use of the volume fader right here for the track which I have my drums on. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play back my drums and as I play my drums I'm going to move my volume fader. As I move it I will see some new automation being written into the automation lane here in my Cubase session. So let me show you how this works. I'm just going to hit play and then move my volume fader. So 
So now you're going to notice that by moving my fader around, I've created a whole bunch of new automation here in the automation lane. So as I play my session back, Cubase will pay attention to these automation changes and change the volume and the volume fader accordingly. So let me show you how this works. So you can see how these automation changes are immediately reflected in my mixer. And the great thing about this is that I can make changes to any of these if I don't like them. And of course, I can also automate a number of other features in my Cubase sessions, such as panning. I can also automate the muting and solo functions, and just about any other function which I can take control of in Cubase by simply engaging the right automation mode. Now, one thing I should make note of right now is that when you're done making use of right automation mode, you want to go ahead and disable it. And the reason for that is that if you leave right automation mode engaged and then you start to make some other changes to your session, those new changes will automatically be written as automation changes in your Cubase session, and that can start get a, getting a little bit messy. So just make sure that you disengage right automation when you're done with it and leave read automation enabled in order to make sure that your automation will be read as your Cubase session plays back. Making use of automation is a great way to be able to really take control of the mixing of your session and have a little bit of fun with it, so experiment with it. And if you guys have any questions, please get in touch with me. My email is brian at obedia.com. Find me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obediatutor, and of course on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obediatutor. Please go beyond the tutorial. Give me a call. Find out how I can work one-on-one -on -one with you to help you tame your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia, and I look forward to working with you guys soon. I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next tutorial. Take care.